Article 6 GDPR contains six legal bases, easy to remember. They're super important because if you can't rely on one of them for your processing, it won't be lawful and you'll be in breach of GDPR, and a breach that exposes you to the highest fine level of 20 million euros or 4% of global turnover, whichever's higher. So stick around for these six legal bases along with nine tips and stay with us for why the legal basis story doesn't stop with Article 6. There are 13 others that may apply but don't always, depending on the data you're processing. Hi, I'm Robert Bohr, the founder and CEO of Keepable, the award-winning privacy management software, saving you time, money and stress and giving you a great answer for the board and customers on GDPR. Do check us out at keepable.com. This video is part of Privacy Kitchen, free video help with GDPR and all things privacy. If you're new here, please do click subscribe and notify to hear about our awesome new videos. As always, the links are in the notes below. And we'll just say GDPR again in this video because the UK and EU GDPRs are the same here. So here are those six lawful grounds in the order they appear in Article 6. You'll often hear them called lawful bases, legal bases, sometimes legal grounds. I like legal basis. Now, recitals 40 to 56 of GDPR give some context and examples for the legal bases, but they've been around for quite a long time. There's various guidance from the UK and EU regulators, again linked to in the notes as usual. Now for our first tip, which is true for both GDPRs. The legal bases might be set out as A to F. But as the UK ICO notes, no one basis should be seen as always better, safer or more important than the others. There's no hierarchy in the order of the list. So don't listen to anyone saying you have to look at consent first or anything similar. Each legal basis is as valid as the other. It's a case of identifying the right one for your processing. In practice, you'll use a selection of these. And our second tip is you have to identify the legal basis up front before your processing not least because you have to tell data subjects about it in your privacy notice. And you need to be sure because regulators confirm you can't change legal basis midway through. Right, and now here's our third trip and a common trap. You'll notice that the five legal bases other than consent all include the word necessary. And like a lot in GDPR, necessary isn't defined, but regulators are unanimous and very clear that this is a strict test. It means apart from consent, that your processing needs to be objectively necessary for that legal basis, not just useful or optional, and this is looked at strictly. Regulators and case law confirm you need to do a fact-based assessment of the processing to see if a realistic, less intrusive option is available to achieve the same goal. If it is, you should use that and the other proposed processing isn't necessary. Well, we'll see some examples as we go. Here's our fourth tip. Let's get those into the order you'd want to review them as a private organisation. Now, those in the public sector, don't worry, there's only one difference to the order, we'll show it now. But let's stick with the private sector list and look at the number one go-to legal basis for private sector, legal obligation. Now, the first legal basis you'll look at is legal obligation. Do you have an obligation under applicable law and the processing is necessary to fulfil that? If you do, it's the most cast iron legal basis. And here's our fifth tip. It needs to be a legal obligation under the laws of the EU or an EAA member state for EU GDPR or under the UK law for UK GDPR. The laws of a third country such as the USA don't count here. And for completeness, complying with a contract doesn't qualify because a contract isn't a law. Right, the reason that legal obligation is number one is there's, there's no choice, you've got to do it and no one can object. For example, employers are obliged under tax laws to pay employment taxes to the government, report salaries, an employee can't demand you withhold that information from the government, and as to erasure, good luck calling a tax man asking them to delete your records. Now this nicely illustrates our sixth tip. As you can see, data subject rights like access and erasure can apply differently depending on the legal basis for the processing. Well, what if this ground isn't available? The next legal basis you'll look at is contract where the processing is necessary for the performance of a contract with a data subject, or to take pre-contractual steps at their request. So how do you work out if it's necessary for your contract? The European Data Protection Board, the body made up of all the EEA data protection authorities and their own uh, regulator in the EU, clarifies that it's important to determine the exact rationale of the contract, its substance and fundamental objective. You test against that to see if your processing is necessary for its performance. 
Now, we love examples, and the European regulators confirm the typical example of an individual buying items from an online retailer, wanting to pay by credit card and to have the products delivered. It's necessary for the contract for the retailer to process the credit card information and the billing address for the payment, as well as the address for delivery. And this legal basis also covers processing before the contract in taking steps requested by the data subject in preparation for it. So there are some good examples in a 2014 opinion for the EDPB's predecessor as to what it can and cannot cover. For example, if a consumer asks for an insurance quote for their car, the insurer can use contract as a legal basis to process data like make and age of the car to create the quote. However, it will not cover detailed background checks on an individual or processing the data of medical checkups before an insurance company provides health or life insurance, nor credit reference checks before the grant of a loan, nor direct marketing at the reseller's initiative. So, legal obligation and contract are pretty well nice and clear. What's the third one you go to? Legitimate interests. Now, legitimate interest as a legal basis for processing under Article 6 generates a fair amount of confusion, but you'll see it's really quite straightforward. You can process personal data to the extent it's necessary for your or a third party's legitimate interests. And those legitimate interests cannot be outweighed by the fundamental rights and freedoms of the data subject, particularly if they're a child or another vulnerable individual. Now, the UK ICO calls legitimate interests the most flexible lawful basis for processing. Now, it was underused before GDPR because everyone used to just throw everything against consent and forget about it. But with the issues about consent, it's really shot up the legal basis charts. You can see there are three main components which make up what's called an LIA, or Legitimate Interest Assessment. Identify your legitimate interests, confirm whether the processing is objectively necessary for those interests, and then do a balancing test to see if those interests are outweighed by any relevant rights and freedoms of the data subject. GDPR's recitals 47 to 49 give us a few examples of purposes where legitimate interest is the appropriate basis. They state that it's good for processing that is strictly necessary for the purposes of preventing fraud, and to the extent strictly necessary and proportionate for ensuring network and information security by certain organisations and services. Others it mentions that could qualify include transmitting personal data within a group of undertakings for internal administration employees, Interestingly, not only employees, but clients' personal data. But do look out, you still need to comply with the rest of GDPR, including on transfers, and we've got some great videos there, more coming. It also could cover processing for direct marketing purposes, but look out for the e-privacy directive implemented in the UK and PECA, which requires consent in certain circumstances. If you're a public authority, you need to be aware you can't use legitimate interests in the performance of your tasks. This actually isn't a problem, and it's very logical. Public authorities are given tasks in laws that set them up. So the laws creating each of those tasks give you the cast iron legal basis of public interest or official authority. Much better legal basis for legitimate interests, less challenge and no balancing assessment. And you can still rely on legitimate interests for processing outside of those tasks. So if you're private sector, that's three of the big four. In practice, there's only one left, consent. Consent as a legal basis was massively overused before GDPR. People used to say, yes, you consent to XYZ and just crack on without making any real records as to what was consented to. After GDPR, however, with fines for choosing the wrong legal basis and not being able to prove compliance, consent's being avoided like the plague. It's become the last resort due to the requirements on collection and record keeping. Now, you can see many of the obligations around consent built into the definition in GDPR. Consent is defined as any freely given, specific, informed and unambiguous indication of the data subject's wishes, by which he or she, by a statement or a clear affirmative action, signifies agreement to the processing of their personal data. In summary, obligations of consent include that it's a positive step, so no pre-tick boxes. I think everyone knows that now. Before they consent, they have to be told it can be withdrawn and it has to be said separately. Separate consents were appropriate, so think of those cookie notices, separating out different categories of cookies, necessary marketing, etc. And separate out your consent from terms and conditions. There's a bit of a Facebook case going on at the moment, which is totally contrary to EDPB guidelines. And you need explicit consent to process special categories of personal data. And you need to keep records showing what they consented to, the privacy notice they were given, that they were told they could withdraw consent and whether they have or not. And the right to withdraw consent means it's a tactical option normally, not always a strategic one. And another requirement is our seventh tip. You need to name each controller in your privacy notice, but not the processors. 
So you'll need to name yourself and any other control you're going to share that personal data with. There's a lot of regulator guidance on consent, again, links in the notes. And now onto the last two legal bases. Okay, necessary for vital interests is a quick legal basis to deal with. It's available to both public and private sector, although recital 46 of GDPR says it applies when processing is necessary to protect an interest, which is essential for the life of the data subject or that of another natural person. So our eighth tip on legal bases, to use necessary for vital interests, it has to practically be a matter of life and death. So this is rarely used, but it's good to remember for emergencies. Okay, public sector, this one's for you. This legal basis, often shortened to public task, will be your number one go-to legal basis for your core processing, because that processing will be necessary for the performance of a task carried out in the public interest or in the exercise of official authority. Your whole reason for being will be set out in a law, so this covers those activities. And as the UK ICO notes, this will cover processing necessary, for example, for the administration of justice, parliamentary functions, statutory functions, pretty broad, governmental functions, and activities that support or promote democratic engagement. Now, that's not an exhaustive list, and some private sector entities may well be able to rely on this legal basis too. The UK ICO gives the example of water companies because they're carrying out functions of public administration and they exercise special legal powers to carry out utility services in the public interest. So public sector, don't feel hard done by. There's no reason you've got this public task legal basis as your go-to legal basis, meaning you've got five legal bases in normal practice rather than just the four for private sector. Okay, and here's our ninth tip about those other legal bases. If you're processing special categories of personal data, such as health or religion, then you need one of the six in Article 6 plus one of the 10 in Article 9. And if you're processing personal data on criminal convictions and offences, you need to have one of the six in Article 6 plus one of the three in Article 10. Those are for other videos. So there you are. You know about the six legal bases in Article 6 GDPR and how to choose between them. Not as hard as some might make out. Now, please do look at our other Privacy Kitchen videos, including seven principles of GDPR. And please do use hashtag Privacy Kitchen to tell us the topics and questions you want covered. Do visit us at keepable.com to get your demo to see how we make operationalizing privacy simple and intuitive, from data mapping to breaches with instant insights. Now, stay well in the meantime and see you soon in Privacy Kitchen. Did this video make the topic easy for you? Well, that's what Keepable software is all about making GDPR compliance a breeze, instantly creating the insights you need to prove your compliance to the board and customers alike. Why not see for yourself by booking your demo at Keepable.com? And while you're there, we have a whole host of content on our blog, including real-life customer stories, insightful posts, and useful downloads. Hit the link in the video description or visit us at Keepable.com. Looking forward to speaking with you soon.